Welcome to Use and Care Training for the Advanced SC6000 Battery Rider Scrubber. The SC6000 is a rugged, high-productivity, easy and safe-to-use cleaning machine that provides serious cleaning with a low total cost of ownership. The SC6000 is also available under the Nilfisk brand outside of North and South America. This course provides an introduction to the SC6000, including how to use and care for the machine on a daily basis. The SC6000 platform is available in either a cylindrical or disc configuration. The majority of the functionality is common to both deck configurations. Where these platforms differ in operation, the differences will be clearly highlighted in this training. This course is not intended to be a substitute for the operator's manual that ships with the machine. It is important that you read, understand, and follow all safety and operating instructions in the manual. Doing so will ensure years of safe operation and optimum performance for your machine. By successfully completing this course, you will be able to identify SC6000 components and their function, explain how to inspect and prepare the machine for use, list the steps necessary to start the scrubbing function, explain how to operate the machine including the various cleaning modes and how and when to use them, explain the machine cleanup procedure, describe battery charging process, and perform daily, weekly, and other routine maintenance tasks. In order to accomplish our outcomes, we will follow this course outline. First, we'll get to know the machine by going through an overview of the components and systems. Once we've gotten to know the machine, we will learn how to prepare the machine for use, how to properly operate the machine in each of its cleaning modes, and how to clean up the machine and prepare the machine for storage so that it will be ready for its next use. We'll conclude with a review of routine maintenance items that will help to keep your machine performing in peak condition for years to come. The SC6000 machine is available in three different deck size configurations, two sizes in disc and one in cylindrical. The cleaning path sizes are 34 inch and 40 inch in disc and 36 inch in cylindrical, with brush size and quantity as shown. Beyond these three basic deck sizes and types, machine packages have been created with various additional functionality like EcoFlex onboard detergent dilution system, battery sizes, and various other options and accessories. Cylindrical models allow you to pick up debris and wet sweep and scrub in one pass. The cylindrical model pictured here includes an optional right side edging broom. You can identify the machine you have by the serial plate on the back of the steering column. Note, images provided during this training may contain some additional options like overhead guard, safety beacon light, or rear-mounted recovery hose. Use of these optional features will be covered near the end of this training. Overview of components and features of the SC6000. Looking at the machine from the front right side, the stylish SC6000 design consists of an operator interface area, including the adjustable operator seat, the motion control pedal which controls forward and reverse motion, the steering wheel and operator control panel which are tilt adjustable. The operator panel will be covered in further detail just ahead. Removable waste bin to hold larger debris manually picked up while out cleaning. Cup holder located next to the left side of the seat. The front non-marking drive tire provides propulsion and tight maneuvering. The drive motor built into the tire includes an automatic brake that is engaged any time the machine is off. The large non-marking rear tires roll smoothly over rough surfaces. Optional front LED headlights location. Well protected and accessible scrub deck area with steel protection doors and front deflector. Behind these scrub deck metal side doors will reside either a cylindrical or disc style scrub deck system with two brushes. Optional edge sweeping broom available for cylindrical models. Looking at the machine from the left side, we find the 50 gallon 190 liter capacity solution tank with side access fill port and cap, the recovery tank system which includes an access cover for clean out, pre vacuum motor filter and screen cover. This filter system prevents debris from getting to the vacuum motors and is located on top of the tank behind a removable surface access door. Debris catch tray to help prevent larger recovered debris picked up by the squeegee from causing a clog in either the tank drain hose or the floor drain of the facility. Sealed float switch system for shutting off vacuum motors when recovery tank is full and is located inside of the tank. Steering column tilt adjust release. 
left side scrub deck protection and access door, looking at the back of the machine, recovery tank drain hose with pinch flow control, squeegee vacuum hose that carries recovered solution from the squeegee to the recovery tank, squeegee assembly for recovery of used solution, and solution filter and isolation valve located on the left side of the machine in front of the scrub deck. Looking inside the machine with the operator seat tipped out of the way, we find the seat prop rod system to hold the seat tipped forward, refillable Ecoflex detergent concentrate container for use with optional Ecoflex system. Some machines will include an onboard charger located behind the seat with a charge cord that plugs into a standard outlet. If an onboard charger is not present, a shelf charger will be used for charging the machine. The indicated battery power connector plug would be disconnected from the machine and plugged into a shelf charger, and of course the batteries. The operator control panel area consists of a number of touch activated switches and steering wheel mounted activation paddles. Smart key magnetic key reader shown with yellow supervisor key in place. A key must be present in this location in order for the machine to activate. Power switch used to turn the machine on and off. Display screen which provides key information and scrub attribute information as well as a menu for configuration navigation. Information button and navigation arrows for use with the display screen menu. Pressing the I for information button will bring up the machine menu that allows machine configuration and access to machine use status data. For further information about the full capabilities of the screens within the information menu, refer to the operator's manual provided with the machine. Accessing the information menu is not necessary for operating the cleaning systems. One touch scrub system on off button with plus and minus scrub pressure adjustment buttons. Solution on off button with plus and minus solution flow adjustment buttons. Vacuum on off switch. Speed limiter switch. Detergent switch which is part of Ecoflex functionality. Button is not functional if not equipped with the Ecoflex system. Dust guard switch for use with optional cylindrical side broom dust control. This switch is non-functioning if not equipped with dust guard. Automatic install switch for installing disc brushes. Button is non-functioning for cylindrical style units. Headlight switch. Button is non-functioning if not equipped with optional headlights. There are three steering wheel base paddles to allow operator fingertip activation while using the machine. Burst of power paddle is for activating Ecoflex burst of power mode. This paddle is non-functioning if the machine is not equipped with Ecoflex detergent metering option. Timed solution off paddle for use before entering turns to minimize chance of leaving water during tight maneuvering while scrubbing. And the safety horn on the right side of the steering wheel. The control panel on the right side of the steering wheel consists of a emergency stop switch resettable with a twist to release and a control system circuit breaker to protect electronics in case of a fault. To begin a cleaning shift with the SC6000, you should find the machine as it was left from the previous day before. If proper machine cleanup and storage steps were completed, you should find the machine as follows. The batteries should be connected to the charger, fully charged and ready to go. The recovery tank should be empty and clean, and the lid should be propped open to dry. The brushes should be clean and possibly left nearby to dry or reinstalled on the machine. For cylindrical systems, the hopper should be in the machine but empty and clean. The squeegee and side blades should be clean and ready to use. Let's go through the inspection and machine setup steps in a bit more detail. Disconnecting the battery charger. If left on charge overnight, the battery should be fully charged and ready for a shift of cleaning. If your machine has an onboard charger, unplug the charger power cord from the wall outlet and wrap the cord into its storage location next to the charger behind the seat. If your machine is using a shelf charger, unplug the machine battery connector from the connector on the shelf charger. Plug the battery connector into the machine receptacle. Lower the seat into the operator position by disengaging the prop rod. Squeegee inspection. For effective water pickup, the squeegee blades must be clean and in good condition without wear or tears. Remove the squeegee to do a proper inspection. To remove the squeegee, loosen the two squeegee locking knobs and remove the squeegee system by grabbing the handles and lifting it off. The vacuum hose will remain attached to the bracket where the squeegee attaches. There is a convenient squeegee inspection and maintenance holding point built into the recovery tank as shown.
Inspect squeegee and assure a clean edge in good condition will be in contact with the surface on the front edge of the blades. And assure the sealing surface on the top side of the squeegee is clean to assure a good seal with the squeegee mounting flange. Information on maintaining squeegee blades is contained in the maintenance section of this module. To reconnect the squeegee, use the handles to put the squeegee back in place, making sure the supports protruding in front of the handles land on top of the squeegee mounting bracket with two locking knobs going into the slots on the bracket. Hand tighten the squeegee locking knobs firmly in place. Finally, verify the vacuum recovery hose connection is properly seated and connected to the squeegee mounting bracket. Cylindrical brush inspection. For proper cleaning, the correct type of brushes in good condition must be properly installed. To access the cylindrical brushes for inspection, with the scrub deck raised, open the scrub deck side protection door by pressing the indicated latch on the top of the door. You can start on either side of the machine since the process is repeated from the other side of the machine. To release the scrub deck side blade system out of the way, release the indicated latch and pivot assembly towards the front, providing access to the cylindrical brush access door idler assembly. While working with the side blade, inspect it and assure it is clean and in good condition without significant wear or tears to assure it will function properly in containing the water. Open the brush access idler door assembly by pulling the yellow latch assembly out and down to release it and then remove it and set it aside. Pull out the cylindrical brush. Inspect the brush. Assure it's the correct brush for the application. Verify the cylindrical brush is free of debris that can get wrapped around flattening bristles. Verify that the brush has enough bristle length for proper cleaning and debris capture. If the bristle length is down to or below 1 inch, 2.5 centimeters, the brush should be replaced. Reinstall brush by sliding the brush into place and pushing down firmly on the near side of the brush to raise the far side of the brush up to help it engage with the drive hub. Using your foot can help make this step easier. While pushing in on the brush, turn the brush back and forth until the drive mechanism engages on the far side. You will feel this happen. When reinstalling the idler door, assure the door is latched tight against the main deck body. Door should latch tight. The latch hook length is adjustable if it is not latching tightly. Repeat this entire process from the other side of the machine for the other brush. Brush inspection for disc style decks. As with cylindrical machines, for proper cleaning, the correct type of brush in good condition must be properly installed. To access the disc brushes for inspection, with the scrub deck raised, open the scrub deck side protection door by pressing the indicated latch on the door. You can start on either side of the machine since the process is repeated from the other side. Disengage and remove the scrub deck side blade system. To do this, loosen the indicated knob and shift the side blade assembly forward and out to release it and set it aside. While working with the side blade, inspect it and assure it is in good, clean operational condition without significant wear or tears to assure it will function properly in containing the water. Remove the brush with a quick rotational twist towards the front of the machine to disengage the three lug system from the disc drive system. Inspect the disc brush. Verify that the correct brush is selected for the application to be completed. Assure that it is free of debris and that if the bristle length is down to or below 3 8 inch, 1 centimeter, the brush should be replaced. Disc brush installation. The brush can be manually installed by engaging the three drive lugs on the brush with the drive system on the machine and giving a quick rotation towards the front of the machine to lock the brush in place. Or, you can use the automated brush install system built into the SC6000 by following these steps. Slide the disc brush under the deck. Align the brush in the proper position for auto install system by pressing the yellow brush guide bar towards the center of the machine and aligning the brush against the two guide fingers lowered to the floor when you push the brush guide bar system forward. Release the brush guide bar raising the alignment fingers off the floor. The brush will then be sitting directly beneath the drive hub and ready for automatic installation. With the machine turned on, press the brush install button on the control panel. The deck will then automatically drop down on top of the brush, spin for a few seconds to engage the brush, and then turn off and raise again. During this process, the display screen will show the brush install icon as shown. 
Keep your hands free of the deck and brush while the process executes. Finish the process by reinstalling the deck side blade assembly, locking it in place with the knob, and closing the deck protection door. Repeat the entire process from the other side of the machine for the other brush. To save a little time, both disc brushes can be installed simultaneously with the automatic brush install system. We are now ready to transport the machine to the area where you will fill the machine with water and detergent. Board the machine and set the tilt steering wheel to a comfortable position using the steering column tilt adjust release. The seat can also be adjusted forward or backwards to your comfort using a lever on the seat. Turn on the machine by placing the smart magnetic key in the indicated location and then pressing the power switch as shown. After the machine initiates, the magnetic key can be removed or left connected. Regarding the smart keys, there are two different color keys, blue for the operator and yellow for the supervisor. The yellow supervisor key provides access to additional machine configuration and usage information not required during a normal shift of cleaning. More information about yellow supervisor key functionality is available in the operator's manual provided with the machine. All keys have a unique identification number that the machine will read and can be programmed to allow or prevent access to the machine. When the machine initially is turned on, all control panel button LEDs will light up and an initialization screen will be displayed on the operator interface as a self-test is executed. After this self-test, the display will look similar to this. Verify that the machine has enough battery power to complete the scrubbing tasks by checking the battery icon in the display panel. Now you can drive the machine to the fill area. The machine uses a bi-directional motion control pedal, depressing the pedal forward to go forward and backwards to go backwards. The foot pedal is fully variable, meaning that just like a car, the further you depress the pedal, the faster the machine will travel. Note, the machine utilizes an automatic parking brake system on the front drive wheel motor that automatically releases when motion pedal is depressed and re-engages when the machine is not in motion or turned off. Also, if the machine motion does not begin as expected, verify that the emergency stop button is not engaged by twisting it and releasing it. Filling the machine with water and detergent. Open the solution fill port located on the left side of the machine and fill the machine with clean water. Hot water cleans better than cold, but the water temper should not exceed 130 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 54 degrees Celsius. If the optional fill shutoff option is installed, attach a standard garden hose to this connection. It will automatically shut off when it reaches the proper fill height. The control panel display has a tank level indication in the lower right hand corner of the display. The final fill level should be around 2 inches below the opening to prevent leakage from the tank cap while in motion. Adding detergent. Any detergent specifically designed for use in an automatic scrubber is acceptable for use with the SC6000. If bulk detergent is to be mixed into the solution tank, fill this tank about two-thirds full with water, then add the proper measured amount of detergent, then top the tank off with water to properly mix it. This will ensure good detergent mixing while filling the tank. Reference the dilution ratio for the detergent you are using and mix properly in the solution tank with the understanding that the SC6000 solution tank capacity is 50 gallons, 190 liters. Then fill the tank to the full height. If using a wall mount detergent mixing system, fill the solution tank with the mixed detergent and water. If your machine is equipped with the EcoFlex detergent mixing system, fill the solution tank with only water until full. Then, tip up the seat and examine the EcoFlex detergent tank. Confirm that there is sufficient level of detergent concentrate in the tank and the correct detergent for the task or remove the tank from the machine by unscrewing the supply cap. Fill it with the desired detergent through the larger tank opening and reinstall. Starting and stopping scrubbing. To begin scrubbing with the machine, the best practice is to first pre-wet the brushes by pressing and holding the solution switch for about 5 seconds to allow solution to flow to the brushes. This action will help to prevent damaging delicate floors by running dry brushes on them. Next, press the one touch scrub button switch. This will activate the entire scrub system and the indicator lights in the switch buttons will show this. 
The brushes and squeegee will lower to the floor. The scrub, vacuum, solution, and Ecoflex detergent system will be set to active. None of these systems will begin running, however, until the motion pedal is pressed. This prevents solution from gathering in puddles on the floor and helps prevent any brush polish marks on the floor. In addition, green LED lights will appear in each of the switches that are active. The display screen will display scrub parameters and additional information while scrubbing, including scrub down pressure, with graph showing which one of three settings of down pressure are active, setting one regular scrubbing in this instance. Solution flow setting with graph showing which one of four settings are active, setting one lowest solution flow in this instance. If equipped with Ecoflex system, this area of the screen will display the active detergent dilution ratio and what Ecoflex dilution strength level is active on the machine in the graph. The dilution ratio can be configured to display as percent concentration in the configuration menu. In addition, the display will show the current scrubbing speed. Scrubbing speed can be configured to display in either miles per hour as shown or in kilometers per hour in the configuration menu. The display will also include remaining solution tank level, remaining battery power, and the hour meter for the machine. The scrub parameter settings that will be active when you first press the scrub button are what were last used the last time the scrub system was active as default. Pressing the motion pedal forward will activate the full scrubbing function. The machine will move forward, solution will flow, the brushes will begin to spin, and the vacuum will turn on and recover the solution. While the machine is moving in reverse, the squeegee will raise automatically. To pause scrubbing, release the motion pedal. The machine, solution flow, and brushes will all stop. The vacuum will continue to run for 10 seconds to help clear the vacuum hose and squeegee of any remaining water. To stop scrubbing, press the one-touch scrub activation switch again. The solution will turn off, the scrub deck will lift from the floor, the vacuum will shut off after a brief delay to allow any remaining water to be picked up off the floor, the squeegee will raise automatically when the vacuum shuts off, and the scrub parameters will disappear from the display. That's basically it. The scrub, solution, vacuum, and detergent systems are all automatically activated when the one-touch switch is pressed. No further action is required other than pressing the motion pedal. Any individual system can be turned off or back on by simply pressing its switch at any time during scrubbing. Adjusting Scrub Parameter Settings The SC6000 features integrated scrub pressure and solution control, which makes it easy to adjust the cleaning power of the machine. The integrated control settings have been calibrated to use the correct combination of brush pressure and solution flow rate to clean at various scrub pressure settings. For the lowest cost of ownership and the greatest machine productivity, you should always use the minimum scrub pressure necessary to achieve the level of cleaning desired for the most productive and most economical cleaning. The one-touch scrub activation switch has pressure adjustments of plus and minus above and below the on-off switch. What scrub pressure is active is based on the number of bars shown in the display screen. One bar for regular scrubbing, two bars heavy scrub for more soiled areas, and three bars for extreme scrub for the dirtiest areas with stuck-on debris. Each of the scrub pressures has a preset matching solution flow setting so that when you increase or decrease the scrub pressure, the solution is automatically adjusted up or down based on the scrub pressure setting. The solution flow level can also be adjusted independent of the scrub pressure as well. It can be completely turned off by pressing the solution button to turn it off. The solution graph will then show no bars. Or you can use the plus or minus buttons to adjust the solution flow setting. The next time the scrub pressure is adjusted, the solution level will again sync up with the scrub pressure level. Solution Flow Level 4 is a high flow mode and should only be used for double scrubbing or other times when you want to put a lot of solution to the floor quickly. Solution Control Features In addition to solution setting adjusting with scrub pressure setting, the SC6000 has two additional standard features that help increase productivity by increasing the amount of scrubbing possible per solution tank of water and that increases safety by reducing the amount of water applied to the brushes while tight maneuvering. The first of these solution control features is called SmartFlow. SmartFlow automatically adjusts the amount of solution applied to the brushes based on the travel speed of the machine. 
If the SC6000 is scrubbing faster, more water is applied up to the operator selected flow setting. If you have to slow down for tight maneuvering or congestion, the machine automatically scales back the water flow so that no more water than is necessary is applied, eliminating wasted cleaning capacity and detergent. The operator does not need to activate the system. It is always active while in the scrub mode. Simply select the water flow setting necessary to effectively clean and the machine automatically adjusts solution flow based on machine speed. A second standard feature is the timed solution off feature. To minimize the chance of leaving water on a corner while scrubbing, the solution can be turned off just before a corner and then turned on after the turn. The SC6000 has this best scrubbing and safety practice incorporated into the machine cleanly and simply. The indicated timed solution off paddle can be activated just before a turn. When this is done, the machine will automatically turn off the solution for 5 seconds and then turn it back on again to the previous setting after 5 seconds. This makes reducing water flow before turns as easy as possible for the operator while reducing the chance of leaving water on sharp turns. While this feature is active, the solution level on the display will change from the normal bar graph to a 5 second countdown timer. You may exit this feature early by toggling the timed solution off paddle a second time. Ecoflex Onboard Detergent Metering System Models equipped with Ecoflex provide greater cleaning flexibility, save the operator time, and reduce cleaning costs all while being more environmentally friendly. Ecoflex system provides four distinct cleaning modes that can easily be selected and changed to best address the different areas and cleaning needs of your facility floors. One of the four cleaning modes is always active when the scrub system is active. The four cleaning modes are entered by either pressing the Ecoflex chemical bottle button switch on the control panel or by toggling the burst of power paddle on the left of the steering wheel. The cleaning mode you are in and the detergent concentration for that mode are displayed on the lower left portion of the display. The four cleaning modes of Ecoflex include Plain Water Cleaning Mode, which applies just tap water to the scrub deck and is your most cost-effective cleaning mode that can be used in areas with very light soiling. No bars present in the detergent graph and LED in the detergent switch will be off. Minimum Concentration Detergent Mode, which adds a specified small amount of detergent to help enhance the water's natural cleaning ability. While in this mode, a single bar in the graph will show, along with the active concentration ratio, 256 to 1 in this example, and a LED in the detergent switch will be on. Full Strength Detergent Concentration Mode For your more heavily soiled areas where a higher detergent concentration strength is needed to remove soils from the surface. It is indicated by both detergent graph bars on and the dilution ratio, which is 64 to 1 in this example, and the detergent switch LED will be on. Burst of power mode, which increases scrubbing pressure, water flow, and detergent dilution strength one level above current setting, all with the push of a single paddle, and will revert back to the previous scrubbing configuration after one minute. This is ideal for addressing an area that is more dirty than the surrounding areas, like a spill. The display will show the icon along with a countdown timer for when burst of power mode will expire. Actual duration of burst of power mode is configurable in the configuration menu. The Ecoflex system will remember the scrub parameter settings active prior to setting the burst of power mode and will default back to those settings again at the end of the specified burst of power time. Steps for configuring the minimum concentration detergent and maximum concentration detergent levels will be covered in the maintenance section of this training module since this is not a daily task you will need to complete. Burst of power mode is entered by toggling the burst of power paddle. All other modes are entered by pushing the detergent switch, and it will cycle through the remaining three modes, which are detergent off, minimum concentration, and maximum concentration, and pushing the detergent switch again will complete the cycle back to detergent off. Speed limiter feature. While in motion for scrubbing, the SC6000 features the speed limiter, which allows you to reset the machine's top speed for greater operator comfort. This means you do not need to hold the motion pedal at a certain angle to hold a desired speed while cleaning, but can instead hold the pedal comfortably fully down when the speed limiter function is set. 
To use the feature, scrub at the speed you want to be set at and then hit the speed limiter button switch. The LED in the switch will light up, showing it is active. Unlike cruise control for an automobile, this feature rescales the top speed, so you will now have variable pedal control of speed up to the new top speed you set it at. Press the speed limiter switch again to cancel this functionality and return the machine to the normal full speed setting. Double scrubbing. Double scrubbing leaves cleaning solution to dwell on the surface to help loosen stubborn stuck on dirt, oil, and debris. To set the SC6000 into double scrub mode while scrubbing, turn off the vacuum by pressing the vacuum button switch, which will turn off the vacuum and raise the rear squeegee. To prevent the side skirts on the deck from moving water off of the surface, they can be raised as well following these steps. Open the scrub deck side door to access the scrub deck. Press down with foot on the side blade raise lever. Engage lock system to lock the blade off the floor and close the deck door. Repeat for the other side. When finished double scrubbing, lower side blade again for proper water containment while scrubbing and recovery of solution. To help maximize productivity and achieve great cleaning results, here are some cleaning tips. Always stay alert and safe. Avoid distracted driving. Plan out and use an organized and logical cleaning route to optimize your cleaning coverage. Long, straight cleaning lines are the most efficient. Keep a consistent overlap for consistent cleaning. Use the minimum setting for solution, detergent, and scrub pressure necessary to get the desired cleaning results. Doing so will increase cleaning time on the floor, run time, and reduce brush wear and detergent usage for the lowest total cost of cleaning. The SC6000 design allows better edge cleaning using the right side of the machine. Use the clear visibility provided on the right side of the machine to clean along walls and other obstructions. Approach intersections with caution and look carefully around corners to avoid a collision. Use the timed solution off feature and activation paddle before a sharp corner or U-turn to minimize chance of leaving water on a corner. Look behind the machine regularly to verify clean and safe dry floors. Dumping and refilling. Eventually the solution tank will get used up and the recovery tank will become full with the recovered water. The level of the solution tank is always available from the graph in the lower right corner of the display. The SC6000 utilizes a float switch in the recovery tank that will turn off the vacuum recovery fan when the recovery tank is full to protect the vacuum motor from ingesting water. When the float switch is activated, the vacuum motor will turn off and the display screen will flash this image. Usually, you will run out of water in the solution tank before the recovery tank float switch activates. When the solution tank is empty or the recovery tank full, transport the machine to a suitable location to empty it. Remove the recovery tank drain hose from its storage clip at the back of the machine and remove the cap. Bend the hose over to prevent flow, then release the hose at the drain opening. You can use your foot to control the flow if required. Reinstall the drain hose cap and put the hose back in its storage position after draining. For cylindrical machines, pull out the debris hopper and empty this each time you dump and refill the machine. If more scrubbing is to be completed, fill the machine again and go clean. After using the machine for a while, one of two things will occur. You will have completed your scrubbing task for the shift, or the battery will have become depleted to the point of requiring a recharge. Either way, the cleanup and storage process is the same. The battery indicator icon is like a fuel gauge for the battery power. When fully charged, all bars will show. As you deplete the battery throughout your scrubbing shift, fewer bars will show. Eventually, the battery voltage output will hit the machine low voltage cutoff. When this happens, the display screen will change to what is shown and the scrubbing system will automatically turn off and raise, but the vacuum and propulsion system will remain active to allow you to dry the floor and transport back to the dumping and charging location. Storing the machine. In order to prepare the machine for storage, the first thing to do is to empty the recovery tank and rinse it thoroughly to remove any and all debris from the tank. Start by removing and cleaning out the debris catch tray and then replacing it. To clean out the recovery tank, leave the drain hose open with the lid open, spray the inside of the tank down. With the tank lid open, make sure that the recovery tank float switch is clean and operational. 
you should leave the recovery tank lid open to allow it to air dry overnight. It may be necessary to empty the solution tank as well. Since only clean tap water is used in the solution tank for units equipped with EcoFlex, it is not necessary to empty the solution tank every day if water is left over at the end of a cleaning shift. For non-EcoFlex units, where detergent is mixed into the tank, the detergent can settle in the tank and clog the water filter. Because of this, it is recommended to empty any remaining solution at the end of the cleaning shift for units that do not have EcoFlex. To empty the solution tank, on the left side scrub deck, remove the indicated drain hose from its storage position and point the drain hose away from the deck motor and remove the cap. Then open the indicated ball valve to allow the solution tank to drain. Close valve, recap hose, and put drain hose back in its storage location when complete. Remove the squeegee, rinse it with water, and inspect it to make sure the blades are not ripped, torn, or worn. The squeegee blades have four working edges, so the blade can be flipped end for end or flipped top to bottom to expose a fresh working edge. If all four edges are damaged, a new squeegee blade is needed. If a blade needs to be changed or replaced, do that now. If not, hang the squeegee to dry. Steps on maintaining squeegees and side skirts is provided in maintenance section of this training. Open the scrub deck access door. Open the side skirts and remove the brushes. Rinse the brushes of any debris that may be present. Inspect the brushes to see if they need to be replaced. If they do, do that now. If not, set them aside to dry or reinstall them. On cylindrical machines, it is important to remove the hopper and empty it and rinse that every day of use as well for the machine to perform properly. Charging the machine batteries. After emptying and cleaning the recovery tank, scrub deck, and cylindrical debris hopper, it is time to charge the batteries. Batteries should be charged every day of use, even if the batteries were not fully depleted. Tip the seat forward and prop it in place. Your machine may have an onboard charger. If it does, connect the power cord for the onboard charger into an outlet to begin the charging cycle. For shelf charger machines, disconnect the battery connector from the machine and connect it to the charger that shipped with the machine or appropriate alternative shelf charger. Note, to maximize battery life, it is important to always store the batteries in a charged state. Never leave the machine for an extended period of time with batteries in a discharged state, as this will harm the batteries causing them to prematurely degrade and fail. To help keep the SC6000 machine looking at its best, it's also a good idea to take a damp rag and clean off the exterior of the machine as necessary. Programming the EcoFlex Dilution Strength Settings for machines that include the EcoFlex option. The EcoFlex system has two programmable dilution strengths that can be configured and readjusted at any time with the following procedure. Usually this process is only completed when the machine is initially installed or when the detergent used is changed to a different detergent with different dilution requirements. You can change these settings in the future by repeating this process. Before setting the dilution levels, you need to determine the full strength detergent dilution recommended by the manufacturer and also determine a lower concentration setting than the full strength setting to be used for the minimum detergent concentration mode. We need to have both of these settings figured out in a dilution ratio prior to programming the machine. Look at the label of the detergent bottle for the manufacturer's dilution instructions. If a dilution ratio is not given, a percentage number or a number of ounces per gallon may be given. Convert this to a dilution ratio. This will be used as the full strength detergent ratio. Determine a minimum detergent concentration level that is a weaker strength than the selected maximum concentration. The SC6000 allows dilutions from a minimum of 400 to 1 to a maximum of 32 to 1 in 10 discrete ratio settings. To program these settings into the SC6000, start the machine and activate the scrub system. Press the detergent switch until the dilution mode is in the maximum level with two bars shown in the display graph. Press and hold the detergent switch for two seconds to enter change mode where the dilution ratio on the screen will begin to blink. Repeatedly press the detergent switch to cycle through the dilution ratios available until you find a ratio equal to or near what you calculated for the maximum detergent concentration level. The setting will be locked in after the detergent switch stops being pressed for a few seconds. In this instance, the new maximum dilution strength level is 32 to 1. 
For setting the minimum detergent concentration level, place the machine in the minimum concentration mode with one bar in the detergent graph and repeat the above steps for entering the new dilution level. Optional Equipment the SC6000 has a number of value-add options to increase productivity, cleaning flexibility, operator and machine safety. Most of the options are self-explanatory. Here are some comments about options that require some additional explanation. For cylindrical machines, the side sweep option provides a broom on the right side to kick debris into the path of the scrub deck where it can be captured. The broom will only be active when the scrub system is active and can be turned off manually during scrubbing by raising the arm system into the raised and locked position as shown in the pictures at right. The two black knobs are used for adjusting the side broom height. For machines with side sweep option, the dust guard option may also be included. Dust guard is used to suppress fine dust that could be generated by the side broom by creating a fine cloud of water mist to trap the dust. Dust guard system will be active anytime the side broom option is active unless specifically turned off by pressing the switch on the dashboard. Water for the dust guard system is pulled from the solution tank of the machine. The spray tip can be removed for cleaning with a quarter turn. If the nozzle gets clogged, a descaling agent can remove the mineral buildup. The wash hose kit provides low pressure water washdown of surfaces and the machine during cleanup. Water is pulled from the solution tank for this option. The VAC wand kit stores a hose and wand at the back of the machine that can be assembled for picking up dirty solution from the floor in areas where the machine does not fit. This picture shows the option in its storage position at the back of the machine. Parking brake override. If you need to move the machine and you do not have power, the automatic magnetic parking brake system can be overridden by pulling out on the indicated tab. A screwdriver or other device can be installed to hold the brake off, allowing the machine to be easily moved. For safety, be sure to re-engage the parking brake after the machine has been moved. Never leave the machine parked with the parking brake disabled. Routine maintenance. To keep your machine investment functioning at its best, routine maintenance tasks must be properly completed according to the established schedule. This maintenance schedule is included in your operator's manual. Maintenance tasks are broken down into daily, weekly, monthly, and annual tasks. Please take a moment to read through this list. Many of the items have already been covered in the module or are self-explanatory based on the description. Other items will be reviewed next. Rear Squeegee Maintenance a well-maintained rear squeegee blade is critical for providing clean, safe, dry floors. The rear squeegee blade has four wear edges that can be changed quickly and without tools. To flip or replace the squeegee blade, open the band clip that holds the squeegee in place. Flip the rubber squeegee, providing a fresh edge as the leading edge of the squeegee blade. If no fresh edges are available, replace the squeegee. To function properly, a squeegee must sit level on the floor with proper squeegee blade deflection as shown here across the full length of the squeegee. An out of adjustment squeegee will have poor water pickup and result in premature wear of the squeegee blades. There are two main adjustments for the squeegee assemble, the tilt and the height. If the squeegee is not sitting evenly across the floor, Adjust the tilt of the squeegee by adjusting the indicated black knobs until the squeegee sits level and is functioning on the floor. The height and thus deflection of the squeegee is controlled by two casters that ride on the floor when the squeegee is down. If proper squeegee deflection is not achieved, lower the squeegee and use the indicated knobs to adjust the deflection. Note, make sure both sides are adjusted to the same height. Reinstall the squeegee back on the machine when maintenance is complete. Make sure that the ceiling surface between the squeegee and the squeegee mounting bracket is clean of debris for a good vacuum seal. The side blades keep solution contained while scrubbing. Just like the rear squeegee, the side blades will wear and require maintenance. Each side blade has four available wear edges. On a weekly basis, look at the blade edge that contains the water and flip or replace the rubber blade to provide a fresh edge to control water if necessary. No tools are required to maintain the side blade. Release and pivot out or remove the blade assembly from the machine and clean and inspect it. 
To release the blade for maintenance and flipping, there is a strap like on the rear squeegee for releasing it. Loosen the locking mechanism, flip the blade, and reassemble. The side blades are spring-loaded and self-adjusting, so height and level should not usually need to be adjusted. If it does become necessary, the yellow knobs at the front of the assembly can be used for making adjustments. Recall that for double scrubbing, the side blades can be locked in the raised position. If, after double scrubbing, the blades were not released to the lowered operational position, the SC6000 will have poor deck water containment until the blades are released to the operational position on both sides of the deck. Battery Maintenance Batteries that get low on water will have their runtime and usable life significantly degraded. Battery water level should be checked on a weekly basis to prevent premature battery failure. To check battery water level, tip the seat forward and prop it. Carefully remove the caps on each cell one by one and look at the water level. Water level should be above the plates but below the top to allow for water expansion. If level is low, add distilled water to the cell. Fill water to above the plates but around 1 8 inch below the fill well. Do not fill to the top of the fill well. Repeat process for each cell of the battery. Caution: Inside the battery is a powerful acid and water mix. Avoid contact with it. Wear safety glasses and gloves and wash hands after checking. Your machine may have the optional battery watering system installed. The battery watering system with visual fluid level indication simplifies battery maintenance while increasing safety and saving time. If the level indicator shown in the lower picture of each cell shows white, the cell is filled properly. If any of the cells do not have the white indicator, then you should connect the hose shown in the top picture to the water system as shown and to a distilled water source on the other end. Squeeze the filling ball until the pump has solid resistance. This will fill all the cells to the proper height simultaneously. Solution Water Filter Maintenance if solution does not flow down to the brushes when expected and other obvious checks have been completed like solution control button light on and verifying that solution is actually in the tank, then it is likely that the solution filter is clogged. The solution filter is located on the left side of the machine in the broom chamber area. Look for the filter indicator logo on the tank. There is a ball valve just before the filter allowing you to turn off the water and avoid dumping the solution tank prior to servicing the filter. Unscrew the filter housing and wash the internal filter screen out in a sink and then reassemble and turn back on the ball valve. The recovery filter, located behind a door at the top of the recovery tank, protects the vacuum motor from dust and sand. It should be removed and cleaned on a weekly basis. Remove and simply rinse it under water and then shake the water out of it and reinstall it. Ecoflex System Purging. This process can be completed each time a detergent change is made to the machine and should be completed once per week to keep the system working properly. Park the machine over a floor drain since concentrated detergent is released from the machine's scrub deck during this process. Tilt the seat forward to access the Ecoflex concentrated detergent bottle and remove the small gray cap from the top of the Ecoflex bottle. With the machine on and the scrub system off, press and hold both the detergent switch and the solution switch simultaneously for two seconds. This will initiate the 20 second Ecoflex automated purge sequence. During this action, the display will show the image along with a countdown timer for the process. The vacuum motors for the machine utilize carbon brushes. The carbon brushes in the vacuum motor should be inspected for wear and replaced if necessary on an annual basis. The expected life in hour of these brushes is 1200 hours of use. Refer to the service manual or an authorized advanced service center for further carbon brush inspection and replacement details. Lubrication. There are a few key mechanical points on the machine that should be lubricated on a monthly basis. The attached diagram from the operator's manual highlights these locations. This concludes the instructional portion of this training. After successfully completing this lesson, you will be able to identify SC6000 components and their function, 
explain how to inspect and prepare the machine for use, list the steps necessary to start the scrubbing function, explain how to operate the machine including the various cleaning modes and how and when to use them, explain the machine cleanup procedure, describe battery charging process, and perform daily, weekly, and other routine maintenance tasks.